Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toast and happy the Thursday. That feels like a real Thursday. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's not been my experience. Oh my God. Just once, like just agree, like for the sake of agreeing, like nobody cares. My, excuse me? Like, it's not that deep. Like, yeah, it feels like a Thursday. Oh, because it is. Like, it's not that deep. Okay. Feels like a Thursday. Yes. I'm so glad you agree. Yeah. I couldn't have said it better myself. You look gorgeous. We're Thank both wearing you. just kind of like comfy, cozy energy today. We're giving gym. I'm wearing, sometimes there's nothing cuter than a gray, like, zip up hoodie. I stole this from Olivia and she's not getting it back. Sorry. Gray is tough for me um, now that I've discovered that I think I'm a winter. <laughs> okay so like I don't know is gray a winter or a spring definitely uh, not a spring it might be an autumn you should just get your colors done I know for the amount that I talk about it yeah I think I have some an email in my inbox I need to uh, read it and see if the person's in Florida because then we should do it while you're here Patreon oh speaking of Patreon Probably up today, I started the editing process last night. I vlogged my whole evening last night, which was my book club with my private chef, Catered Affair. It was so good. The book club, like everyone's talking about it. Everyone said it was like one of our best meetings yet. The food was so good. The conversation was so good. It's really a great book club book. Everyone liked the book, had a lot of very strong critiques of the book. Um, did you hear about Kitty Carr? It was the name of the book. Really just kind of like a textbook, perfect evening. And a great book club book, you would say? Yeah, I, I have a, I'm like very frustrated. It was the author's first like debut novel, which is so major. I almost wish she had waited to tell the story. So bef like she had a little bit more experience under her belt because she tried to do a little too much. And by the end of the book, it's like she ruined the magic she had created in the middle. Mm. And it was on its way to being like one of my favorite books ever. Wow. And I like was so frustrated with it. Like I kind of hate it now. It's, it's very confusing. And everybody was feeling the same way. Got it. Interesting. What are you guys reading next? Uh, we'll find out today. Very cool. Well, Redheads, speaking of book clubs, we are yeah. reading. Actually, this is kind of exciting. Big Redheads news. Oh, my God. Hold your, gird your loins. We're reading The Frozen River by Ariel Lawhan, who wrote Codename Helene. Okay. Which makes this our first time that we're doing an author twice on the Redheads. And she's our, I didn't, I didn't think it would be her. But it's her. Yeah, but like who else would it be? Like you know? it could be, you know, one of the classics, Sally Hepworth. Yeah. Jessica Knoll. Yeah, yeah, Kristen Jessica Knoll. Kristen Hannah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's Arielle Lawhon, which I love that for her. I loved Codename Helene, so I'm really excited for Frozen River. It's a historical fiction book. It's like based on a true story, which I love. We haven't done historical fiction at the Redheads in a while, and in my personal life, I've kind of been slipping mm. on my historical fiction. We caught... We caught Jack slipping. He caught me slipping. So I kind of need to get back into the history books. And I think that's a good way to dip my toe into the frozen river. I am so excited to see you in just a mere, you know, two days. Hours, technically. Hours at this point. I'm giddy with excitement. I can't wait to see my family. And it's just, it's the end of the week. I'm seeing my family. It's the Super Bowl. I have my health. No, it's... I, Everything's kind of coming up. Excitement, joyousness, positivity, fun, fun, fun. I'm going to leave it at that. I couldn't agree more. So important, like when you're at, you know, the summit of something. Mm -hmm. Is that the right use of the word? Is the summit at the top or the way up? Like it's like you're at the edge of the cliff. Like you're like there. You're there. Okay. So, Okay. Oh, I guess maybe, no, maybe that wouldn't be. I feel like this all, I'm, all I'm trying to say is like, I feel like a huge part of like maintaining a healthy mindset in life is like to acknowledge like exciting <laughs> things coming. And like, I, in this moment, I just want to be very present saying I'm so excited for what's to come for me in the, in the next couple of days. The summit is the highest point. Okay. So I guess I'm like about to, to reach the summit and I'm sitting here like taking a moment of gratitude. Yeah, and I think the way to the sum the on the way to the summit in, is in some ways better than the summit. I would agree because you have what to look forward to. That's really the message of the climb. Yeah. So, once again, the climb. It's always relevant. Once again, everything comes back to the climb. 
Well, that's the truth. I've been in such a Miley renaissance Mm -hmm. since the Grammys. I've been listening to Endless Summer Vacation because I was like, I want more of of this girl. Of that energy. What I didn't realize is the song used to be young, which is one of my favorite songs of last year. We talked about it on the Patreon of 2023 recap is from that album. Yeah. I thought it was like a new single. She was doing new things. So I'm like, okay, so there are two songs that are kind of like life changing for me from that album. Yeah. I need to listen to the whole album. And I I only got into four songs before I was forced to play Happy Song. Oh, my book club was talking about Happy Song. Is it really life saving for them as well? Some of the mothers in book club, they were familiar with the Happy Song. And then some of the newer mothers hadn't heard of it yet. And this was like kind of the passing of the torch. Yeah. To so those new I feel like there's someone out here there who needs to hear this. If you have a fussy baby, there's a song by Imogen Heap, who is a great talent. She sings Good Night and Go other bops but she wrote a song for children called the happy song that is like melodically and chemically written to cheer up your baby give it a try it's like designed to ease the mind yeah give it a try next time baby is like fussy and it's not because they're hungry or they're pooped or need a burp or this or that like try the happy song it works for us not all the time but enough of the time it worked magically oh my god jackie i forgot i mean i did tell you this but i need to talk about on the podcast I'm going insanely viral. I heard. Okay. So I was looking through my TikTok drafts, like just to see like things I haven't posted. And I forgot that I had made this TikTok while we were on our family vacation and I never posted it. It was just this funny moment where we all got up from the dinner table and we realized that our sister Margot had eaten her dinner off of the charger, not the actual plate. And it was like this funny, stupid thing. I literally went to bed and I was like, oh my God, it's at 700,000 views. I woke up this morning now, 6.5. Three million. Claudia, the universal no deal TikTok kerfuffle is great for you. No music. Okay, for a for a second, I was like, "Are you speaking English?" The universal no deal kerfuffle. Like, <laughs> now it makes sense though. No, you're totally right. Now the comments are really split. People being like, "You are just like rich. This is such like a privilege, first world problem." Even though like a charger, like you can literally get like at the dollar store for sixty five cents. Um, like have you never been to a wedding um and then most people also being like what is a charger people like don't know what chargers are i learned about chargers late in life too i think a lot of people learn about chargers when they get married yeah when did i learn about chargers i don't even think it was when i got married because i didn't register for chargers but i no not not registered Oh, like for, decor at yeah. your actual wedding. That's, I think, really when I learned what a charger was. Yeah, so it's like a plate that's just decorative. It's a plate, yeah, it's, it's like a placemat made out of plate. But it's like really not made out of plate. It's not food safe. No, but it's it's very akin to a plate. It's of the plate elk. Oh, it looks like a plate, but I'm talking about material-wise. Sometimes they're like made of wood. They're not really safe to eat off of. No, no, but you could get confused. It looks like a plate and unless it's, Especially when it's like whatever the it, material it's was. It's the same shape. The shape, but even the material of the one that she ate off of was, was a little confusing, safe. except for the fact that like it was a charger. Yeah, so I'm just like kind of going majorly viral, like all these, you know, like uh, like BuzzFeed type like accounts be like, we'd love to share your video. Please submit content and consent and approval here. Like, no, bitch, you think you're taking away my views? Eat my ass. I'm not signing that shit away. You don't think it's going to like help raise your rising tide, raise your, sh- raise your shide? Do you think I should do it? No, no, no. I want all the clicks. You want all the clicks, but you don't, like you might need the distribution to get more clicks. Well, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Maybe I'll sign a distribution deal later on. But right <laughs> now I'm just like kind of enjoying my moment. For sure. But don't, oh, don't overplay your hand. So true. And you only have like minutes left before Shit, the world moves Should I sign it now? What was the publication? Is anything legit? Yeah, like Lad Bible. You know, like all those big Facebook mm, page type Claudia, of. Claudia, that's really how you get your name should, out there. Should I do it? I think Lad Bible you could do. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Like maybe then we could do like, I don't know, the Toast UK tour or something. I think it should be publication dependent. Not just like all publications can have the video, but like worthy ones yeah yeah i feel like barstool sports is like about to knock on my door like they love to do would you let them god that's how you go viral because then jackie what have they said about israel that's my (laughs) litmus test (laughs) no like if if one if one annie lennox wanted to repost my video you know what i would say 
Dirty says no. That's what I would say. No, Barstool is marked safe. Dave is good. Yeah, yeah, I would but I would give it to Barstool. I'll have to check it, what, what Lad Bible's been saying about the war in Israel. When Barstool like then distributes it, then so many more people see it. And that's how you end up on GMA, today's show. Oh my God, you, by the way, what if I have to postpone my trip to see you because they want me on the Today Show? <laughs> but what if, what if they want Margo? You're, well, that's interesting. You're not in the video. I sound like Madison Beer, but like I'm supposed to be in the video. <laughs> it's no, I am in the video. Margo's you just can't see me. The star. So by the way, so is Shapiro. He's like in the reflection of the window, like cracking up at Margo. What if they want Margo and Shapiro on GMA? Oh, then I won't sign over any rights and everybody can stay less famous than I just, me. When I think about examples that are akin to what you're experiencing, it's the person on camera who Hoda wants to talk to. Of course, of course. Not the sister who posted it. Unless sometimes the person could bring their sister and maybe she would bring you. Maybe she would bring me. Maybe I just won't forward the email that I get from the Today Show producer is asking to be connected with my sister. Also, you and Marco look alike. You could impersonate her. So true. Okay. You're going to steal the shine. Yeah, or maybe I'll just let this thing die. You know, no one else. If I can't get famous, no one else can. Not rising tides raise all shines for the sisters? No, no, no. no not since you're distant from your family? Yeah. Oh, and that's the other element. Like I am Aaron Rodgers, so no. Yeah, cut it. That's a wrap. You don't even have her email. Exactly. I couldn't forward it to her if I wanted to. Sorry, Oda. We, by the way, have an amazing show today yeah. because we have the stories and and tell me about them. How are they? Like I feel on, good on a vibe? about them. There's a couple that feel like that just tickled my fancy. You know mm. what I mean? And not because they're about Royal Caribbean or the royal family. I think right. it's just like things that say royal. No, don't say that. Mm, I'm going to look into this. And then there's also the obvious, you know, what you've maybe seen in the headlines. I don't know what I've seen in the headlines, but what I do know is that with our new schedule today, we also have Dear Toasters. We have some very interesting sort of different ones, you know? I love different. We have a, a, a write-in about stand-up comedy. We have a story about stand-up comedy. <gasps> Wait, also this next thing has nothing to do with stand-up comedy. I just remembered that I wanted to say it. So guess who I spoke to yesterday? Thanks. Well, I did, yes, but that's not what I was going to say. Um, I spoke to my trainer, Hillary. She listens to The Toast. Queen. And she's going she's gonna to get us into 5K shape. She has like a whole plan. She found us a running coach. Like, we're done. We're good. We're done. We're done. That's I'll, I'll, be, I'll be able to like train in person, but she's going to make a plan like for all of us. Okay, make a plan, stay alert, bring a snack. Yeah, stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> Love that. Okay, great, yeah. Also, I think what I've surmised is that maybe the 5K doesn't have a location because they're, like, not serious about it. And I think, like, maybe we took it really seriously. Oh, my God, not me getting a running coach <laughs> and this whole thing's a joke? <laughs> That's what I was, like, getting from the comments. Like, No, I by the way. I think the they way, just, like, say they're, oh my god I, they just no, like but, say stuff and they're not kind of like doing it there's no 5k oh my god jackie we named our episode title about the 5k and there isn't even a 5k i don't know that there isn't a 5k oh but no jackie Jackie, i was talking about it at my book club i was like <laughs> I, th I was like i think joe rogan's gonna come jackie there is no 5k <laughs> there's no 5k to ever was a 5k and that's why we weren't invited and that's why yeah that's why he can't tell us the location oh um, jackie there is no 5k <laughs> <laughs> no when that's not confirmed but it's kind of the the vibe i'm sensing but i got a running coach maybe we do a toast 5k Ugh, no. Like, I would never choose to do it, you know? Yeah, and I was only even... doing it, I was only doing it for, like, the thirsty element that I would right. get to, like, meet other more famous, successful people that, like, who could prop me up and give me attention and, like, followers and stuff. Like, let's be real, I don't want a 5K for fun. Yeah. I had a goal in mind. Charity? No, sorry. Like, I'll just donate. I'll write a check. Awareness? I'll post on Instagram. Hmm. 
So we'll we'll stay tuned. I mean, you never know. They could decide to take it seriously, but I'm just feeling and like by the it way, wasn't serious. Wait, wait, no. Now that I'm thinking about it, like Bert never answered my DM. Like after he like, I was like, oh. Like we never connected. Like it was just a story. Because there was nothing to connect over. Because <laughs> there's no 5K. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, there is no 5K. Okay, cool, cool. That's so awesome. Me thinks. And like this was just like this little joke on their podcast that like, and they didn't even mean to, but like an unintended consequence of this like funny joke from their podcast was like these two enormous losers showing how desperate and thirsty they are. Okay, but I just want to say this all started because Jelly Roll said he was running a 5K. Oh, I forgot Jelly Roll was going to be there. Yeah. And so People Magazine was fooled too because that's where I saw it. But they are fools. So I don't know why I'm looping myself in with them. I like how like, we're yeah, yeah, we're not fools. We didn't fall for it. <laughs> you just can't believe everything you read on the internet, I guess. It's just so crazy when you like find out a piece of information that like just rejiggers the way you look at the world, you know? And it like, and it all makes sense. I have like, I, and why I really relate to this one particular Taylor Swift lyric, like in this moment, I've never been a natural. All I do is try, try, try. Like I am like, genuinely like at my core, like a desperate person. Like I don't, I don't really have any need to be like, I have a very full life. I'm very successful. Thank God. Knock wood. Like, and this desperation, like this deeply uncool thing about me, I can't sh sort of shake. And now I've just been exposed by like for, for who I truly am. Maybe exposing it and showing it to the light is a way to kill it. You know, sunlight kills. <clears throat> right, I'm kind of like Edward. You're Edward. Wow, okay, so that sort of shook the foundation on which I walk. Yeah, but you should still train for the 5K with your running coach. I don't know about that. Let's get into the stories, because as Turdy stated, we have a lot to do today, and best not waste time, best to make haste. Without further ado, here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know. And the Fast Five stories that you need to know are brought to you by Current. Old school banking just isn't working anymore. They ding you with ridiculous fees, play games with your money, and they want you to get into debt. So stop banking old and get Current, the future of banking. So Current is banking and credit building together. They make it super easy to get paid as soon as possible, build credit safely, and save more. All done in one app. Managing your money is hard, but Current can make it easy. You set up direct deposits to get the most out of Current. You can get paid up to two days faster. You can qualify for fee-free overdraft overdraft up to $200 for when you spend more than you've got. And you can get their awesome looking build card that's nothing that's like nothing else out there. You can build credit safely using your own money so you don't pile on debt. There are no credit checks so anyone can start building credit right now with Current. And quite possibly the best part about Current is that there's no annual or minimum balance fees. Let me say that one more time. In my opinion, the best part about Current, there are no annual or minimum balance fees. So what are you waiting for, girly? Get Current, the future of banking. Go what to Current. What are you waiting for? Current.com slash toast or download the app. That's C-U-R-R-E-N-T dot com slash toast. Terms do apply. Current is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services provided by Choice Financial Group, member FDIC, and Cross River Bank, member FDIC. For full terms and conditions, visit Current.com or call 888-851-1172 for more information. Today's episode is also brought to you by Squarespace. We love Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your own terms. So whatever your reason for starting a website uh, might be or wanting to like rejigger your website, Squarespace is such a great asset. It's pretty idiot proof and very user friendly. So whether you're not super technologically advanced or a lot of people I know like do um like work IRL, but they want websites for a portfolio, whether you're a photographer, a graphic designer, an artist. So there's a million different reasons, a million different templates available on Squarespace to showcase your work, whatever your work is. Obviously, if you work in e-commerce, you have a side hustle, some sort of business where you sell things online. Squarespace is amazing for getting all your orders, your inventory, and um, shoppable experiences 
done. You could sell custom merch, you can create an online store, you can showcase video collections, you can send out email campaigns. They also offer great analytics so you can use the insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from, analyze which channels are most effective. And um, if you're a blogger, which, you know, I feel like if you're a blogger, like listening to the toast is a full time, like part of the job, they have great blogging tools as well. So, so Go to squarespace.com slash toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain by using code toast. Again, head to squarespace.com slash toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using code toast. Today's episode is also brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Looking for a super offer for Super Bowl 58? DraftKings Sportsbook has got you covered. New customers can bet on the big game and turn five bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. DraftKings is such a great app to have on your phone at all times. Obviously, I feel like we're all so sporty these days. We're obviously like a a huge sports podcast. We're influential voices in sports. And DraftKings Sportsbook is so much fun. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code TOAST. New customers can bet five bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 58 with code TOAST. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Visit 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Voided Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Again, our DraftKings Sportsbook code is TOAST, T-O-A-S-T. Thank you. You're welcome. Our first story, a little comedy drama. Pete Davidson ditches a Radio City warm-up gig for Matt Reif at the last minute. Wait, what? Matt Reif is performing a three-night stand at Radio City Music Hall. Okay, on my way here, I passed like a billboard. You know those billboards that get like put on construction sites? Yeah. And it was like, congrats, Matt Reif. Six sold out shows. So two shows a night for three nights. I was, that's huge. Yeah, and Pete Davidson had agreed to open for him, warm up the crowd. But Wait, they're what? Fr- they're friends. Okay. According to Radio City Insiders, he backed out just two hours before showtime. Backstage sources at the Rockefeller Center Institution say that Matt Reif's team had to scramble to find a backup and eventually got someone lined up with a matter of, within a matter of minutes before the curtain went up. According to a social media post from the show, uh, John Campanelli ended up filling in for Davidson. Yeah, I mean, I don't think like finding someone new would have been a problem like um, any comic would be honored to to do it but um if they sold the tickets being like with special guest pete davidson you know it's kind of a letdown oh did that i don't know if they. i sold don't know the tickets, i don't know but i'm sure he was like really excited it's his big night the crowd would be so hyped for pete his friend is coming through for him and then for two hours before for pete to cancel that's a little I also think that's it's like crazy that, that Matt Reif got Pete Davidson to do something for him. Like, I don't know why I think that's crazy. I feel like Pete Davidson, I would have said, like has good friends and is a good friend because he's always like, they're always showing up for him. I feel like he has good friendships, but this isn't what a friend does. And of course, like, because Matt Reif is kind of rife with scandal right now, it, you, your first thought is like, is he disassociating from Matt? But I don't think that's what it is. I'm sure just something came up. Comics don't do that. Comics aren't losers who are like, oh, there's a little bit of like backlash on TikTok. I should stay away. Like comics don't give a fuck. I don't think it has to do with that either. I also think, yes, Pete has like a lot of friends, but I also think that's like the nature of like comedy. Like everybody just like supports one another. And you need your friends in that business. Or yeah. shall I say in this business. Oh, right. In as, our business. In our business as comedians. Who run 5Ks. Who are top of the charts comedians? We need right. friends. Luckily, Turdy and I have each other. That's why we don't know anyone else. We no, we have Bert and Tom until further notice. And you have Tinks. I I will always have Tinks. We actually have a lot of friends, not in the comedy space, but in the no. influencer space. Like we're friendly influencers. A lot of because you want to know what it is. Like most comedy podcasters come from the comedy world. We are comedy podcasters who weirdly came from the influencer world. Yeah. So we're just different in that way. And that's why we're not like other shows. And we're probably better than everyone else, if I had to guess. Yeah. Sounds right. Speaking of comedy news, something that wasn't a story, but I find to be newsworthy Mm -hmm. is Shane Gillis 
hosting oh my God. SNL and I've been meaning to talk about it. I'm so glad you brought that up because I saw it and I sent it to you and I was shook because for anyone who doesn't understand why it's a big deal, the first time I had ever heard of Shane Gillis was many years ago when he was announced as one of the new SNL cast members. And obviously for any comic, that's like the job of the century and it's like the biggest deal. Then they had announced that he was the... Uh, one of the new cast members, of course, you know, the internet did their thing, found some old clips of him saying some unsavory things on a podcast, specifically using a slur. And he was immediately, you know, the offer was withdrawn. And I think for like any comic who, you know, gets to SNL, I don't know if there's anything worse. Like, I don't, I, like, I think what happened to Shane Gillis is like so many people's worst nightmare. Yeah, it was, so it reach, was to reach swift. the summit, to reach the summit and then fall down. And the then fight. have it taken away. And what was so interesting about what happened to Shane Gillis is that he kind of took, you know, this lemon and made it into lemonade and his career really blew up after that. He just like pounded the pavement, podcast, podcast, podcast. He put his, he produced his own comedy special, put it out for free on YouTube. It blew up so much so that the next time he recorded a special, Netflix bought it and it was like the number one special a few months ago. It was really popular. Yeah. Um, And he kind of made himself someone who's like a little too famous to even be a cast member on SNL. He's kind of someone who's, you know, the guest host on SNL. And they did it, which I think is so crazy. Like, I don't know if I was Shane Gillis, would I be like butthurt and like bitter and not accept? I don't know. Not for host to come back in that way. Like if they had asked him to be a cast member now, I'm sure he would be like, oh, you can go fuck yourself. No, and he wakes, makes, way, he has a huge podcast. He's like below us sometimes, but, but I Sometimes think, above us. Yeah, yeah. He makes a but lot of money. he was doing that podcast before he even got the first yes. SNL job. Like everything that he's doing now is what he was doing before the first SNL job. And that's why he got the job. Mm -hmm. And then it, he was taken away from him and then he's continued to just like do Shane, do his podcast, do his comedy. And as we say, the cream rises and now he will be hosting SNL, which is completely full circle and a really crazy thing. And I absolutely have to watch his monologue just to see how this is like, to me, this is historic. Like yeah. I, I need to see how they're going to address it. Like, and they're, they're going to. I mean, how could they not? It's really the elephant in the room. But it's also, so interesting. I think that when he was, if you watch his special, and I've seen a lot of clips, I think I watched the special, but I also see clips. He does like an insanely funny and good Trump impression. And I think there, that's yeah. why he was booked to begin with for that impression. Because mm. if you think of who they've had play him in the last few years after Alec Baldwin, or even maybe Alec Baldwin no. included, it's like not great. And, no, and the guy who they currently have for Trump isn't a cast member. He just is the Trump guy. He comes in to do Trump. But he's like not even a good one. Agreed. Uh, I'm so sure they'll utilize that. I think they'll have him do that impression, but I think that's why he initially got the job. It would make sense because when you audition for SNL, you like audition with impressions. Yeah, no. And when I read Keenan's book, not to always, you know, be bringing up Keenan, it is very impressions based. Um, it's yeah. like very, it's like old school, like sketch comedy. It's not you have what to like people, do it's characters. Not really, a lot of people who I think try out for SNL, maybe even get on SNL, like aren't like stand up comics. They do this sort of like, improv they're from like those improv groups so um Shane Gillis is very much like a multi-talented comic because he does the impressions but he also writes like really good stand-up um I'm fascinated by this and of course people are like up in arms on the internet being like you know he's not sorry but I think this is like <laughs> such an interesting life cycle of a cancellation and, and we haven't seen it before this to me this is sets a precedent and I'm beyond interested I also just think it's like kind of crazy like to have let him go, like SNL was making a statement. Like yeah. they were, they were making, which was very uncommon. The comedy world, like they don't do that, you know? So it was very sort of out of character and bizarre. But of course, like when the mob comes, like you just buckle, like that's what people do. Yeah. So the fact that they did cancel him was such like a strong move. And booking him is like a strong move in the total opposite direction. I, I find it very confusing. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. And what sort of message they're going to send and what they're going to say about it. I'm so, like, I will be tuning in maybe perhaps even live. Like yeah, that's I how interested I am. The musical guest is 21 Savage. Great. Great. February 24th. See you there. Oh, it's not this weekend? No. Oh, who on God's green diddly dally earth knows where I'm going to be on February 24th. What is this weekend? Let's see. I don't think there is SNL this oh, weekend. Oh, because it's also the Super Bowl. Right. Yeah, there is none. And they just like, kind of make up their own schedule. I kind of love like and respect that, you know? Yeah. Like maybe we'll do a show. Maybe we won't. Maybe it'll be a yeah. run. They're maybe. just like always keeping us on our toes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because we're just waiting with bated breath. Are you ready for our next story? Yes. Some really lovely news. 40 megastars have come together for one magnificent image on British Vogue as they say a farewell to Edward Ennefel, the NF- editor-in-chief of British Vogue. So, Who I didn't even know was leaving. He's leaving. The cover of his final magazine is 40 huge stars, one class picture. They all, and they're like his girlies. Like, they're not random. They all had, like, been on the cover at one point in his career. They all signify, like, the past, the present, and the future for him. Uh, they all came to New York on the same day for a photo shoot. And these are some of, like, the biggest stars ever. It's and you know really, what it's giving. It's giving Jenna Rink. Yes! 13 going on 30, like the graduation prom scene. When it, they all are like in the park and there's leaves and it's like the best scene on television history. It is, but those were like regular degulars. No, and by the way, I'm sure like the vibe on this set was like so toxic and like rude. They were like eating cupcakes in Jenna Rink's version and there was like, you know, snow in the air. This well, one was probably just like di- a different story, kind of snow. The story they're telling is like, it was just such a beautiful, harmonious day. Of sure. So many, I think it was like a mega factory of getting all the girls ready and styled and everyone comes with teams I think there were probably so many people there they shot it at like a warehouse in the city but the final image is beautiful I mean read me some of the names I mean I saw it but uh Naomi Campbell Kaya Gerber and Cindy Crawford oh I didn't put that together because they weren't seated next to each other there are a couple like interesting dynamics where it's like placements I I wonder how these two got along yeah uh Cara Delevingne Miley Cyrus Victoria Beckham Oprah uh, Serena Williams, Anya Taylor Joy, Carly Kloss. There were some like major randoms in there. Jamila Jamil. Jamila Jamil, Ariana DeBose. Yeah, like yeah. really random. Um, yeah, there were a, a couple randoms. I'm sure they like mean something to Edward. Victoria Am- Beckham. Oh, yeah, I said her. Love her. Oh, sorry, Queen. I Amber can't wait for her. Ha- oh, ha- I actually just met Amber Valletta. Nice lady and very gorgeous in person. Um, what I wanted to say before I like had to be annoying and name drop and I forgot what I was going to say. Shall I continue? You know, British Vogue like is so, all the, all the Vogues, but like British Vogue is really, I feel highlights like how much like better American Vogue could be doing. I feel like American Vogue like never does anything iconic. They're always like getting in trouble these days. Yeah. No, always. something or other. It's like. Joe Coy and then Trevor Noah. It's like, it shouldn't be so hard. Here you have right. someone who shows you how you could do your job. No, and it's literally Vogue. Like, yeah. do better. No, and they act like, oh, we, you know, it's hard to get a great cover and to, it's not. to be on the pulse. But like British Vogue is always showing it up. I remembered what I was going to say. Have you been seeing the like pre-commercial Super Bowl commercials for Uber Eats with the Beckhams? Obsessed. I thought it was... 10 out of 10 perfectly executed. I loved that they let her wear her Victoria Beckham shirt that she sells. People are mad it's like $100 because it's literally like a piece of merch. Um, Obsessed. Uh, What did they call her? Not Jennifer Aniston. Jessica. Jessica. (laughs) It's a funny commercial. It is. And I'm sure we get like more commercial at the Super Bowl. For sure. Yeah. All the Super Bowl commercials are rolling out slowly. I also know that Edward was like a... A close friend of Taylor Swift. So I'm sure she's busy and she just couldn't make it, but it would have been cool if she was in there. It would have been. It was in December, so. She was free. She was free. And it was in New York. Do you think anyone got this email and like didn't? Taylor Swift. You think? Um, I could see like someone getting this and not realizing how iconic it was going to be and just kind of being like, oh, they wanted me to do some like celebratory thing for British. Right. I, I can't make it. No, but like Oprah's there, you know? Yeah. But then when you see the picture, it's like if anybody didn't participate who was invited, like you're... You know what? You know who I actually think probably did that? Madison Beer. She was supposed to be in the video, but... Yeah. I love that reference. I'm sorry. Because like that would happen to me. No, what would happen to me is like to get an email and like not really register the significance of it and be like, Mm -hmm. oh, I don't really want to do that. And then you see the picture and you're like... I should have done that. Right. Things I should have done. That. <laughs> Things I didn't do. That. Right. So, yeah. Huge James, Salma Hayek, Linda Evangelista. They had a sleepover the night before the article said Salma stayed at Linda's place. Oh, not all of the women. Just no, just Salma. these two. But like, Wait, why are you saying Salma? Selma. 
Sorry. Wait, who are we talking about? Selma Sal- Hayek. Oh, sorry. I think you're talking about Selma Blair is on there Selma's too. Selma's there too. Okay. Selma. Sorry, I like wasn't listening to you. Selma Hayek and who? Linda Evangelista had a sleepover. Mm-hmm. That's weird. And isn't Salma Hayek married to that guy? The like richest man in the world. Yeah, yeah. like she stayed at Linda's place in New York. Like you can't get. Up she stayed now. at Linda's dump. <laughs> like that's a little weird. For sure. That's like Elon too. He's the richest man in the world, and he, whenever he travels, he stays at a friend's place. And the way that just would never, ever be me. Like not in a million years. He's like, literally if a couch surfer. It's so crazy. And the way I travel, I act like I have Elon Musk's finance. Like, <laughs> imagine if I actually did. Yeah. This just would never be me. I, you know, guys know how I feel about that. Like, rich people cosplaying as poor people. I, you know, marry you with paper rings type of things. Like, no, don't. Don't. Kate Moss on don't the cover with Lottie Moss. Cute. Another duo. Yeah, cute. It was it was really beautifully done. And it was 1,000% giving Jenna rank. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone looks great individually and together. Like, it probably took a lot of styling. Yeah. So, great execution. Mm-hmm. Bon voyage, Edward. I didn't even know he was leaving. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Podcaster Bobby Altoff calls her <gasps> strange husband, Corey, incredible after he files from for divorce from her. No, I need to, And I know people tune into this podcast to hear us explain stuff. I need someone to explain to me what the hell is going on. Okay, so Bobby Alta, for those of you who don't know, she is the one who had that viral podcast interview with Drake. Her show is called... She was the girl who like, she was like a mom on TikTok with like a, a show called? decently big platform. She started a podcast and literally it took over the world. People thought she was an industry plant. She had guests like Mark Cuban, Drake. Like it was so weird. It was so random. It was like a... It was overnight. Overnight, and then it was gone. And then there were, at the time, like, rumors about her husband and rumors about, like, her, like, sleeping with Drake. Like, it was just so crazy. And I was like, okay, whatever. But then, now they actually are getting divorced. So now I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, her podcast is called The Really Good Podcast. And months ago, there were rumors that she, like, hooked up with Drake after their viral interview or whatever. She totally denied it, and she went on BFF's pod. Yeah. And there was, yeah, that drama with Dave. But now, her and her husband are getting divorced. She posted... As most of you have heard, Corey and I have filed for divorce. As sad as I am right now, I'm so thankful for the time I got to be his wife. Our girls are so lucky to have him as a father, and I'm so lucky to be able to co-parent with such an incredible father in person. Now, I don't know anything, and I'm not saying that she cheated on her man, but if she did, this would be the type of caption you would write when you're really sorry. You know, it's like a really nice caption. Yeah, like, I fucked up, he's good. Amazing, um, perfect man, perfect husband, anyone's lucky to have him. Like, all right, calm down. Don't be mad at me, please. Right, like S R Y. Because when you write, th- when you feel this way about someone, that like you would write these nice things about them, like you should be married to them. Right, and why aren't you? You're a great man. You're a great parent. Like, okay, so stay married. Totally random, totally like random sidebar. So you know Toby Keith, the um, country singer, he passed away from stomach cancer. So sad. Yeah, I. And I'm sure he was just, you know, like really upset about it. But like Luke Combs posted on his story, like rip Toby. Just that? Like legend or something. But it was like, it was really short. And what was a picture of? Nothing. Just black. Black rip Toby. Yeah. It was all caps R, capital I, capital P. Not, so it was more like rip Toby, not rip Toby, which is better. It's still a rip. I know. And I think, you know, Luke was probably just like acting out of grief and, and I can't be mad. But like, I just I wanted to n- note that our king, our king ripped. You wanted to rip him a new one? No, I didn't. Also, should we talk about the backlash? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. Do co- we got a Keith lot of backlash story. for not choosing Toby Keith as a story because like, we're big country music fans. Um, and Jackie and I have said this repeatedly and we actually spoke about it offline. Like I we unless it's like, you know, Queen Elizabeth dying, like. I really don't like like talking about death as a story. It's like not interesting conversation because what else are we going to say? Like, like, oh, we're happy someone died. No, like it's sad. Claudia, we're going to say rip. Yeah, no. And it's Especially just like. Especially when it's not like um, a shock. Like there are some that are stories because it's like, oh my gosh. But, you know, when it's just like rest in peace, great talent, legend. And it's not someone that we've really spoken spoken about there's not that much to say that's why it wasn't a story but we have the utmost respect for toby keith and we hope alan jackson as well we hope that he rests in peace legend of course like 
Red Solo King. Cup. I pick you up. Let's have a party. Like, Thanks for clearing that a, up. It's not a big conspiracy, you guys. Like, we just didn't choose a story. Yeah, because it's just, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. It would have been a pun. Oh. That wasn't, like, it wasn't intentionally be a pun, but it, it would sound oh, like oh. a pun. You know what I mean? So good you caught it. So good I caught it. Are you ready for our next story? No, I kind of love the name Toby. For? People. Girl or boy? Boy. Okay. Toby Soffer. On it, wait. Kind of love. So cute. It is, right? I feel like Toby is always a kid. Like a grown no, and Toby. I also do feel like for a man, like I don't know if I've ever like met like a Toby who was in really good shape. Like Toby is a fat boy's name, like 1,000%. Because it's right? one letter away from Tubby. <laughs> also, because it look, like it sounds and looks like tuba, which is like this huge instrument. That's what I th- think of. Oh, I think of Tubby. Yeah, Tubby. No, for sure. Maybe it's like a curse of a name, especially with like my jeans and Ben's jeans. Never mind. But maybe he was meant to be a Toby. I don't know. I just kind of like the name. I also like the name Keith, by the way. People with last names that are first names. Firsty lasty. That's not a firsty lasty. Okay, there is a lot of co- controversy and conversation about what a firsty lasty is. Some people think a firsty lasty is someone who has a first name for a, a first and last name. Like Toby Keith is a first name, a firsty lasty because. No, no, we don't think that. But then other people say that being a firsty lasty means like you're the type of person who you can't just say Jackie. Like it's Jackie Ashra. You have to say the first and the last name. It's yeah, firsty I'm lasty. not a firsty lasty. No, no, but I was using you as, like, an ex- uh, who's an example of a firsty lastie? Like, honestly, like, Drew Barrymore. Like, no one would say Drew. Right, except her show is like, oh, no, it's the Drew Barrymore show. Right, because she's a firsty lastie. Yeah, that's a firsty lastie. Shout off in the comments. What do you think a firsty lastie is? Or have you never heard that phrase before? Is that an Ashray family thing? No. No, I feel like it's from the click books. It's oh. giving click books. It's giving idiotic click book. Yes. And so I feel like we can determine what it, the definition it's in is, writing it's in the text it's in the scripture we can go to the source should we reread the click books no i think it would just like make us like feel really like old and be like what were we reading yeah like no wonder like i was such a nasty little child like i was reading the click books like and who did i idolize in the click books like the meanest cunt of all yeah, of course she was the best <laughs> She was like the prettiest, the richest. Like, of course, we were going to stand Massey. Most stylish, like, everyone wanted to be at Massey's blazer. house. What is Massey doing this weekend? Oh, can we get invited to Massey's BBQ? You know, like, the way she had her in and out list, she was doing it before 2024. Right. Like, no wonder, like, girls our age, like, we, we grew up, like, watching mean girls and reading the clicks. Like, no wonder we're nasty, nasty women. Gossip girl. The books, too. That's what we read. A thousand percent. Yeah. All right, now are you ready for our next story? What number is it? It's number four. Yeah. So New York City was blessed with a rare sister sighting on Tuesday. And it wasn't Me and us. You? No. Okay. It was the Olsen sisters. Ashley, Mary Kate, and Elizabeth stepped out for a sister's night out as All photographers three? captured the trio strolling the streets while braving the chilly weather. Oh, I need to see these photos. I can't believe, I always forget that third one's related to them. I know, and I just feel like they must be distant because we don't see them together, but they're not, and they are together, and they literally named their clothing line after her, Elizabeth and James. Oh my God, by the way, seeing them all together is so crazy because Elizabeth also does that like smile. No, they're twins, literally. Can you tell Mary-Kate and Ashley apart? Yes. Can you? No. Also, did you know that Ashley welcomed a baby secretly last year? No. A baby boy named Otto. Wow, seeing them all three just like being regular girls walking around. And now this article has photos of them like together throughout the years. There aren't a lot. Yeah. It's the craziest thing. Also how the Elizabeth, the youngest one, like towers over them. She's a giant. Well, she's not a giant. She's probably like Margot's height and they're our height. Ugh, I just like love them. Love. Like, and they're what so they've done is so impressive. I feel like not enough people talk about the row enough as it pertains to Mary Kate and Ashley. People know the row is like this, like, you know, amazing fashion house. But like, I think a lot of people don't even put together that it's Mary Kate and Ashley. 
we just need like more from them and I know they don't want to give us anything but like I know. just something please a documentary a memoir like we need you the culture needs you I guess they're giving us know clothes what, and they like I don't know what I want from them I don't the generation and are leading by example with their fashion statements but we still need more I don't know if I want a memoir really I don't like I'm trying to think format wise I mean if they did do a memoir first of all we need a title second of all would it be one Together? book right I feel like at they're 37 years old like they want their own book yeah it's like so crazy they're only 37 wait is it wait they're 37 yeah how on god's green diddly dally earth does that make sense like which part they're too old or too young too old not that they're too old you know what no, I mean? like, they, like they were always like a couple years older than us no no I feel like when we were like watching full house and stuff they were like younger than us no, when we were watching like their teen movies, they were like we were the older, same, a few girls. years older. No, you're right, you're right. Like New York Minute, we were like in the eighth grade, and they were like in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, that's fair. Yeah, and then, and I love that sister. How old is Elizabeth? Oh, she's thirty four. And what about James, brother? Like, what about him? What does he do? I think he does brother things. James Olsen. I think he does brother for sale. I think they sold him 25 cents. Brother for sale. He's not a big Jackie. expense. Jackie. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of siblings. There's Mary Kate and Ashley and Elizabeth. There is um, Jake, Courtney, I, Trent. Courtney? Jackie, Jackie, wait. I don't see James. Oh, Jake. I guess that would be his birth name. Courtney. <laughs> Who is Courtney? Courtney Taylor Olson is an American actress. She is popularly known as the half sister of the Olson sisters, Elizabeth and Mary Kate. Courtney. Elizabeth is an actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Courtney. Half. So there's, okay. there's, there's also Trent. Must be another half if he didn't get named on the label. Sorry. Older brother. No. He has played himself in a few of his sister's video series. He's brother for sale, I guess. Brother for sale. Only 50 cents. What a tangled web that these siblings weave. Now and I'm I getting images. I want to know about the parents. Like, these parents who had like six children, two of them being such successful child okay. stars. So the dad, David, and the stepmom. So there are five children, some step, I believe. Cool. Yeah, this is very, very interesting to me. Like I said, documentary, memoirs of an Olsen. And when the Olsons got their Hollywood Walk of Fame star, they brought all their siblings. I'm like on this Getty image search right now. Very interesting. So they had an SNO last night. I love that. I want to know where they went. We I was going to say, where did they go? SNO inspo. Right, because where they would go, like we would go. That's probably a good place that's good for sisters and would foster right. like sisterly dialogue. Right. Sisterly love. A thousand percent. Sisterly closeness. Love. So we'll have to make a reservation. Before we dive into the fifth and final story, might I say something? Always. Today's episode of The Toast is brought to you by Mattress Firm. The right mattress matters, and Mattress Firm will help you find the right one. So uh, mattress is the most important thing in your life, and I dare you to take it seriously, because once you do, your life will be changed. No more tossing and turning, sleepless nights. Like your bed is your, for me, it's a beacon of restoration and peace. And Mattress Firm, where my mattress is from, yeah, I was like a little bit ahead of the trends. I got it like six years ago. Um, it's actually my second mattress in a row from Mattress Firm from two different brands, but both from Mattress Firm. And I bought them both during their amazing sales. They have a lot of great sales every year. Um, and shop the President's Day sale. It's uh, happening in store. It's happening online at mattressfirm.com. If you see a lower price, Mattress Firm will match it for you. So they're matching retailers' prices. Get the right bed now. And if a better price comes along, they will match it. Restrictions do apply. Mattress Firm has quality mattresses at every price for your best rest. So my uh, mattress is currently from Tempur-Pedic. If you're looking for... Um, 
different price points. They have all different price points of mattresses. They also have different, you know, bedding accessories. So you can really get everything top to bottom there. They also have the mattresses in a box. A lot of people love box mattresses. They sell them at Mattress Firm too. And they offer free and fast delivery to your door. So if you can't wait to sleep great, get free and fast delivery with Mattress Firm. Thrive this winter and save on the sleep that you need. There's a million reasons why sleep can impact your health. And if you're a mom, you're a working woman, there's just a lot of reasons you need good good sleep. So check out the President's Day sale. You can shop it in-store online at mattressfirm.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Vegamore. Real change happens when you're consistent and achieving the hair of your dreams is no exception. Thanks to Vegamore, sticking to our hair care routine has never been easier and we are seeing the results that we've always wanted. Vegamore products are 100% cruelty-free and they are never formulated with potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. So Jackie and I both came to Vegamore for different reasons. Jackie was entering her clean era, you know, mama hood. And I was looking for my hair to stop shedding. And everyone recommended uh, a lot of topical treatments from Vegamore. And then it also happened to be this like clean beauty brand that Jackie loved. And we both fell in love with the Grow Kit, which is what I used to help a lot of the, the shedding that I was experiencing after losing a lot of weight. So the thing about Vegamore is like you have to be consistent. So the Grow Serum, which I do a couple times a week, I love. It does not make my hair oily, so I don't have to use it and then take a shower and wash my hair, which I love. Um, it also comes with the shampoo and conditioner, which is fabulous clean products, great for your hair, great for if you're looking to keep your hair full and healthy and you'll get on that grow, that grow, that grow shit. Um, when you sign up for a monthly subscription, you can get one bottle or three bottles sent. You're going to save more and you never run low on the products that you need to take care of your hair. Vegamore sells one bottle of grow hair serum every 15 seconds on their website. That's how good this stuff is. I actually just went to Sephora um, and the sales associate was like, this is like the hottest selling thing in here. I'm like, girl, I already have it. Like use Co-Toast. Elevate your hair wellness routine this year with Vegamore. For a limited time, get 20% off your first subscription by going to vegamore.com slash toast and using code toast at checkout. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash toast, code toast, to save 20% off your first order, vegamore.com slash toast, code toast. Thank you, fa-la-la, la-la. You're welcome, ja. Our fifth and final story, a little Disney news, because Moana 2 is set at Disney with a surprise 2024 release date. The line where the sky meets the sea is calling Moana once again. Disney announced the sequel to Moana will be released theatrically on November 27th. That's very exciting. The second Moana was originally developed as a TV series, but became a feature film because Bob Iger was impressed with the footage. So Moana 2 comes to theaters this November. Also, Moana is getting like the live action treatment. So there's just like a lot going on in the world of Moana. And let me tell you another part of this story that I find so interesting. I feel like I told you this story. Do you remember? I think it was during COVID when those two girls on TikTok, um, one of them is like a pop star, singer, songwriter. The other is like this musical composer. Um, They started making all these videos. Like what if Bridgerton was a musical? And they ended up writing a whole album that got like millions of streams. They got nominated for a Grammy and won. It was like this amazing thing that happened on TikTok. Um, They have been tapped to write the music for Moana too. Oh, that's so great. Which does mean Lin-Manuel Miranda's out of a job, which people are both celebrating, but also being like, but he, he did slap the first time. Like, I, Yeah, I feel two ways because obviously, like, I don't ever want someone to not have a job, but Lin-Manuel has many. So let's open up the field to other people. But he, as much as we clown on Lin, like, he's responsible for so many hits, hit after hit. And like, how far I'll go and Yad Welcome. I mean... If not no, for I know. Lin-Manuel, we wouldn't have Yad Welcome. What like, we love to I joke. Say except... Yad welcome. Yad welcome. We love to joke, but like at the end of the day, like we always say, the cream rises. And that shit, that soundtrack from Moana 1, like was that bitch. Like it was top tier. Lynn is the cream? Question mark? Jackie, Lynn hashtag. Lynn is the cream? Exclamation point. Lynn is cream. Period. That's kind of like something for me to wrap my head around. Like I don't appreciate Lynn manuel in his time. No, and it's because like his personality gets in the way of his talent. Yeah, but I feel like But again, is that even true? Do we even know him? That Lin is appreciated in his time. Like everyone is obsessed with him. He gets every job that's remotely Lin like. Lin is a multi, multi millionaire. Like Lin is, hashtag Lin is fine. Yeah, but this is a lot of pressure for those girls because one, a sequel is a lot of pressure. Even if Lin were doing it, he has to out Lin the Lin. Disney has a very high bar. But like if these songs, like what? Oh no, I just got confused for a second but still how far I'll go major yeah 
But I like I fo- I, I follow, have followed this like these two girls' stories just because I thought it was so cool that they won a Grammy, and I feel like they literally could win an Oscar now or like a a Golden Globe. Like they could be egots, and they're just you know two girls, two girls, Abigail Barlow and Emily Bear. Yeah, and they they are they call they're like a writing duo, Barlow and Bear. It's giving like Pasek and Paul, you know. Pasek and Paul. Like it's giving iconic writing duo. Yeah. I'd rather see Pasek and Paul out there shaking that thing. I wouldn't mind it. I, I, I love me some Pasek and Paul. Me too. Except what's um, crazy is Pasek and Paul did La La Land. Mm-hmm. And I don't give a rip about La La Land. I didn't like La La Land. Maybe. I should probably like watch it again. But With I would fresh probably eyes. still not give a rip. I just don't give a rip. No, I know. And when people think Pasek and Paul, they think La La Land. We think Pasek and Paul... Greatest Showman or Evan Hansen. Yeah. Huh. La La Land. That's like Makes you think. I feel like that's like a glitch in my matrix. It's like something I should like that I don't like. There's a couple things. Such like a that. good point. It's such a good point. Yeah. I guess I just can't be pinned down. You can't put me in a box. Well, that's for damn sure. You can't like make a movie for me and expect me to like it. You just but I am know. gonna pin you down right now because the girlies need your help, Jackie. It's Dear Toasters time. So sit down and help I should do so dear toasters is our weekly advice segment where you guys write into us and we'll choose three submissions every week to try and help out the girlies all the issues they range from you know wedding stuff to work stuff to health stuff to husband stuff mostly um so feel free to write us in dear toasters at gmail.com is the email your prompt will remain completely anonymous if you've written in and we have not read it on air either your prompt is uninteresting or it was too long try and keep it like concise need to know information you can also head to the toastpodcast.com check it out there there's a little submission box once you scroll down on the website also anonymous ready yep good morning to the wonderful stunning turdy and the beautiful wise jackie o i am writing in because i am having a predicament my hilarious husband has recently started doing stand-up comedy and is starting to climb the comedy ladder where we live when he first started doing comedy i told him that i didn't want him to joke about me during his sets because i didn't want to feel disrespected now he's getting invited to host shows and when i go to his shows that feature other comics i've noticed that every single comic but my husband tirelessly jokes about their wives significant others during their sets am i being an insecure loser should i just let him joke about me to help his comedy career turdy have you had this combo with Ben, help. That's such a great question and an interesting predicament. And I I feel like you're being very self-aware, but I think the boundary that you set is really nice. And if I were you, I wouldn't reconsider it unless he comes to you and says like, listen, I have this joke and having this boundary is like holding me back a little bit or having him, you approve a joke. I would just like wait till he mentions it. But if he's having success, not joking about his relationship, I think that's like really respectable and totally fine. That's so funny. I was going to say something different, even though like I do agree with you. The thing is, is like, I do feel like it's most likely limiting his potential because so much of comedy is like about your own life. And if obviously you're married, like a huge part of your life is your marriage. But maybe and there's it's so much forcing comedy. him to be a better comedian because if everybody's making relationship jokes and like he has to think outside of that box, like he might eventually be like one of a kind in making different kinds of jokes. It's possible. I, I, I guess I wouldn't, you know, say anything unless he says something. Yeah. And it's very sweet that he hasn't. Um, I never ra- ran it by Ben, but I also know there's a line. Like, I'm not looking to be out here embarrassing my husband. Like, I want to do a show that's, like, relatable and funny and that people can relate to. But also, like, I have a norm. I'm not the type of person who, like, I have respect for my husband. So right. as long as your partner loves you and has respect for you, they really, they won't say something awful, you know? Yeah. Even in the name of a joke. Yeah. I think that if it's weighing on you, you could ask him and be like, hey, is this kind of holding you back? Do you ever wish that you could make these jokes and you guys could have a conversation about it? You don't even have to like wait for him to bring it up because maybe he doesn't bring it up because he knows that you would say no. So I think you should broach the subject and ask him, see how he feels about it. And if this is something he's been feeling like, oh, I have these jokes, like maybe you guys could start somewhere where like he just like runs them by you and... Not forever, but just to get you comfortable with it. I think that like, I I think it's awesome that he's gotten so far while respecting your boundaries. But if you're starting to feel like you're holding him back, then just ask him about it. Yeah. I think this is nice. Yeah, you both sound like normal level-headed people who can have a conversation, which is amazing. Isn't always the case with your toasters. Or comedians. Facts. Was that a Burt Kreischer dig? No, I'm kidding. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right, ready for our next one? Yeah. Hey, Jackson Turd, this one sounds like a novel, like a thriller. My maternal grandmother called me yesterday for a very casual conversation, but towards the end, she mentioned that she and my grandfather were going to get their will made later this week. She explained that their cumulative assets total over $4 million and that the inheritance would be split between my younger sibling and I. This was completely unexpected. She told me not to tell anyone besides my boyfriend. I know this will be so awkward when the time comes and my mom finds out. Both she and my dad will be shocked and hurt. She encouraged me to be transparent with my boyfriend. We've been together for over five years, lived together, and plan to get engaged within the year. Can I make him promise not to tell anyone? I don't really want his family to know. What do I tell? Who do I tell? What do I buy? Do I need a lawyer? This is so weird. Granny's causing drama. Not even also, the fact that like, she wants to give it to you guys, which is, you know, her right to do, but that she wants you to tell your boyfriend, doesn't okay. want you to tell your mom. Like, why is she playing games this Grammy? Whatever you do. Do not tell your boyfriend. Like, sorry. I like to me. We'll get into your mom in a second because that's fucking awkward. And like, you'll have to figure out whatever. But like, literally don't tell your boyfriend. Like, I think you can like keep this close to the best. I don't think you need a lawyer. Yeah. And even if she wants to leave the money to you, why is she telling you now and causing drama between you and your mom? Like, granny's causing trouble. It would have been better for her to just like, you know, when the time comes, like pass away and then like mic drop with the with the reading of the will. Very, you know, very gossip girl. Um, but she's like but putting now, this thing between you and your mom by one, the inheritance, and two, like the secret of it. What's granny up to? Yeah, and also like, is your mom like waiting on this money? Like, yeah. I just, I like to respect yacht elders and typically if there's a grandma like in a deer toasters, I'm always gonna take granny's side. But like, what's granny got up her sleeve? Yeah, there was kind of no reason for her to drop this bomb. Like, it should have been posthumously. Also, why she's only doing her will now. People have maybe, wills, like, throughout their lives. Yeah, maybe she's rejiggering it because she's, like, having an argument. With her daughter, and she's, like, trying to get you on her side by giving you two mil. Right, right, right. No, Granny is being petty. Do not tell your boyfriend. Like, I feel like that's the more oh, important part of this conversation. Piece of this. That's so Let it be weird. like a nice thing. Once you guys get married, like, then you really can share. But like, this is private. And boyfriends, I'm sorry. They come and go. By yeah, I know we've been together for five years, yada, yada. No. The money isn't yours yet, even. So there's nothing to say. She could blow it all before she goes. She does sound also like a little bit like a reckless kind of woman. Like, reckless maybe granny. she changed, changed her mind. She's giving reckless granny. I wouldn't count this money as your own just yet. It's so true. Maybe just sit quiet. And it's nice. I guess the only person you can really talk to is your sister. Yeah. So kind of the... Talk you know, to your heart sister. I wonder if granny told her something different. I think granny's playing games. Or did granny not even tell the other it's, sister? It's giving like... um, What's that movie? Knives Out. Like everyone thinks they are getting the inheritance. Oh my God. And Granny wants to see what they all do. Keep it to yourself. And someone's going to kill Granny. Don't play this game. I wouldn't get caught up in it. I agree. It's a trap. It's a trap. Go about your life as if Granny never told you because you're not getting that money. I'm sorry to tell you. Yeah. It's giving diabolical Granny. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving diabolical Granny. Our third and final Dear Toasters is looking for a little bit more of um, like tactical advice, okay? I love tactical. I, like, love I think we can actually give this girl a good plan. Advice. I've heard this. Actionable. I've heard this marriage tip recently that when like uh, your partner is complaining that you should say, do you want comfort or do you want solutions? And I feel like that's what you would say to like a kid, no? No, it's like when you're complaining actually, about Actually, wait. I love that. Right? It, when you're complaining about something, like do you want me to actually like, tell, like help you or just like commiserate with you? Oh my God, that happened to me the other day. Like I, oh my God, Ben was, oh my God. Because I go straight for solutions. I'm solution oriented, which is why I like this, Dear Toasters, that's why I brought this up. But it's a great question to ask. Do you want comfort or do you want solutions? Oh my God, because no, Ben was coming at me with solutions and it felt like an attack. Like, like, I, like I was doing something wrong and that's why I was in this position. And honestly, like I got so bad at him and I was so wrong and I took my anger out on him because I was angry about something else. Oh my God, I love that. Can you like text that to Ben? Yeah, oh yeah. I, I was thinking like, I need it. That's so funny. I think Ben and I are really similar. Are uh, we? Yeah, but Ben then definitely I like takes on in terms of like emotions, like sometimes a little bit more of like the traditionally feminine role. Like he's no, but, very emotional. No, I'm not emotional. Like if any- You're not, yeah. Yeah, 
I don't know. Anyways, I just thought it was um, it was good because also when you just want comfort, you don't want solutions, my friend. No, no, and it's like stop. And I'm always, now. and it also forces the person who's who's struggling to be like, what do I want? You know, to yeah, be like, huh? That's a good question. It's good. Marriage tip okay. of the day. So speaking of actionable advice. I am a 30-something mother of two, and since having children, I feel as if my vocabulary is embarrassing and limited. I find myself struggling for simple words and synonyms in my workplace. I was an advertising and marketing major in college, and my written communication far exceeds my verbal, mostly because I have time to compose my words. I am worried when I actually meet people for work, they think I am dumb. You both have such a colorful spoken vocabulary. Would you attribute it to being avid readers or something else? Please help. Please be the Cher Horowitz to my tie. I hope it's not sporadically. That is such a good question. I just have to say, if I didn't do this podcast every day, that would be me. Like my, your brain, it's so easy for your brain to become mush. Like you're talking baby talk all day, like one word. And you're trying to find the simplest word for what you're trying to convey to your child. So it's totally normal and natural. Literally doing the show like forces me to exercise my brain, which I'm grateful for. But I do find it harder these days than it used to be for me to like reach for words. What was the word the other day I couldn't find? Recreationally. Yeah. So this is so real. And I do feel like I have a very colorful vocabulary, but it's because I practice every single day by doing this show. So I don't know if it's enough for you to just listen to shows like this or other shows where there's a lot of colorful language because maybe you can absorb some of it. But reading, of course. Right, no, but she really said like she has, it's not so much her like knowledge because she's like, I can write really well. Like she has the words, she has a hard time bringing them brain mouth, you know, like connecting yeah. your brain to your mouth. And I feel like it kind of sounds like she needs brain camp. Yeah, but what is brain camp? In I don't know. What is brain camp? I mean, there are like a bunch of apps and games. Like I play this game. It's a board game. It's called anemia. And anemia, like the definition of that word is like when you ha when you can't think of, the, like you know the word, but you can't say it. It's like the, the brain mouth connection. It's actually a really fun game, but I also think it's actually like a challenge that would perhaps put you on the spot. So a board game. Yeah, a board game. Also, I think maybe even just calling a friend, having more adult conversations. Mm -hmm. Maybe a friend who's like your funny, lively friend and it's just going to be like an upbeat conversation um, that can help you just like exercise your mouth. You can practice because when I go back and listen to like old episodes of The Toast, my God, I sound so stupid. I say sentences like filled with nothing, like, um, yeah, totally. And I'm still not great, but I say much more substance in sentences now. Yeah. It's a skill that you have to like fine tune. Yeah. And when you spend so much time talking to children, of course. Of course. It's so natural. But yeah, trying to find more time for adult conversation. Maybe a word of the day. I've never really stuck to a word of the day, but the few times I've done it, like I've gotten something out of it. But I don't know really where I get my new words from. We were having this conversation when I did Shannon's podcast. She was asking about my vocabulary. Like, how do I have such a big vast colorful vocabulary and I do not know the answer reading definitely helps but I've had it bef since before reading no but the thing for me is like I have to see and in interact with a word like 10 times before I start to even want to know what it means like mercurial is a new word of mine and it's because it was in illicit affairs by Taylor Swift and like I was like okay that's a word I just learned that word then it started showing up in books a lot and on my kindle I would like highlight it look at the definition it means like sort of like unpredictable mysterious if you will um and words like that I learn words like so randomly like even one of my favorite words acrimonious I learned from friends so like I just pick up words randomly but it takes a lot for a word to stick with me yeah. unless you start using it all the time because then we share we word share yeah nefarious of course elk classic <laughs> that's a big one big. low key <laughs> no but don't feel bad about this and It'll it'll come back. It comes just, and goes. It's hard. It's a it's a it's a total life change. And also it's it's physical and mental. Like you literally like it happens whether or not you you start talking baby talk like it, and it also happens because you start talking baby talk. Mm -hmm. So go easy on yourself, girly swirly. Go is um babe. That's our show. And tomorrow will be our last one of the week. And then next week when we are back, Jackie and I will be together podcasting. So you know what such I realized exciting, also? fun times. I realized that next week is a short week because it's President's Day. 
on Monday. That's not next week. That's the week after next. President's Day isn't True. like after the Super Bowl. It's the following week. Sorry. True. True. And of course, you know, let's give everyone fair warning. We will be taking off President's Day. Of course, we respect the presidents. I mean, God bless America, you know? Land that I love, you know? A stand beside her. Yeah. And guide her. Through the light with the night from above. Yes. I love that song. They're all bops. From also like this land is your land. I love. No. All of those songs of the American elk. The elk, yeah. They're the beautiful. The Star Spangled Banner. Like, like the Betsy Ross vibes. Hits. The hits start coming and they don't stop coming. And like chilling. No, and it's like they were written couple hundred years ago and they still slay the house down boots a song that i put in that category that's like kind of not and it's modern and like it has no semblance but i just consider them all the same type of song is and i'm proud to be an american where at least i know i'm free yeah lee green one slayed the house down boots also like this land is your land. Mm. This land is my land. That's right. From California all the way to the New York island. Them islands. From the Redwood Forest Woo. to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. With Amen. That, we bid you a you. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast of Millennium Morning Show where we deliver the fast five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to subscribe this video. Thumbs up, also available as podcasts in our podcasts and be found. So it's about if I just YouTube, I'll be right here. all the places we visit. Podcast for us. Toast of five stories. You're about a beautiful setting. A wickedly talented we are. I have a new outro. And it's the perfect way to end the episode. Okay. Are, where does it go? Is it right now? Are, are it we goes getting right now. Of, it goes what right about Love You Bye? I can add it to the end. Okay. How the, wickedly talented we are. Yeah. Without further ado, we bid you adieu. Love ya. Bye. I love it. Slay the house down boots. Boots, boots, boots. <laughs>